So what does this mean for the Chinese economy as we continue to see more pressure for other developers as well? Yes, uh, you are absolutely right. To pay or not to pay for Evergrande is indeed a, a question, but probably a more important question is that what happens to other developers and what's the spillover to the broader economy? Now, if we look at the U.S. dollar market, this market, while small in the grand scheme of things, is telling us that actually there is extreme stress in the market. You probably have half of the top 50 developers in the country are in deep financial stress and has priced in very high default risk at the moment. And they contribute 25, 30 percent of the total sales annually. And if they all get into financial stress, what does that mean uh, in terms of the property construction activities, in mm. terms of their contribution to the land sales? So that's a bigger question. Morgan Stanley, though, saying that China's high-yield bonds are pricing unrealistic downside risks. So are there any opportunities then here? Well, we, we do think so. Right? If you think about it, the Chinese high-yield property over the past 10, 15 years has, has provided investors with extraordinary return, probably double-digit every year um, over the past 10, 15 years with zero, close to literally zero default. That itself is counterintuitive from an investment perspective. Now, it might be actually a better investment because the risk is properly priced in or even more priced in than the risk, the actual risk. So we do think for longer term investors, if they can get through this very volatile period of time and accept a different return profile, then we do think it's a good entry point. Yeah, but that's the trick, isn't it, getting through this period? And if we just look at that Evergrande bond that's due on Saturday or the grace period expires for it, uh, that's an eight and a quarter percent bond. It's right now trading at 22 cents to the dollar. You'd, you'd need to be quite brave to buy that, though, wouldn't you? Well, is it, you need to be braver to buy anything at par or you need to be, or it's actually an easier decision to buy anything at 20 cents on the dollar. If you know that at 20 cents on the dollar, your downside is actually quite limited. That's why I mentioned that now, if you buy the Chinese property bonds, this is, it's, it can be a very different return profile because you probably need to be prepared to go through restructurings with quite a few of them. So let's look at the return. Um, it's pretty clear also that uh, foreign bondholders are going to be at the back of the queue here. Are markets overestimating the recovery rate uh, for offshore bondholders? The market is pri pricing right now. If you look at uh, what, what, we, what we've seen in the U.S. dollar market for operating non-defaulting developers that are quite some are still trading, are already trading at 30, 40 cents on the dollar. Historically, the offshore recovery of Chinese high yield bonds are actually way higher than that. So I wouldn't say that we're, yes, structurally we're very subordinated, but historically the Chinese corporates have shown extreme strong willingness to honor or actually to work out amicable solutions with the offshore investors. We need to see this kind. Jenny, aside from the uncertainty coming from Evergrande, what about the global energy shortage and the power struggles that Beijing is facing right now? Is that going to factor in, especially when commodity prices are surging? Yeah, the power shortage apparently also adds to, you know, the in-doubt injury from a growth perspective. But power shortage itself in nature is more transitory. Right. But probably we're talking about more structural changes. Power shortage, we've already seen that the government has come out and then have various countermeasures to release that. And we don't think it's going to last long. It's probably in the fourth quarter, it's going to, to ease a little bit. And the activities get into a probably normal, relatively more normal, uh, normal uh, activity. But the, the structural change that China is facing, and actually, apparently, it looks like China is, has a strong intention to, to go on with that, is to grow out of this high debt-driven growth model. And we know that the adjustment period won't be easy.